And another one of our crew, Jacob Opawatch. Opa, just can you take it? Opa, Opa. It's gonna be the intro. Hello, Ridge Runner Nation. We're back and better than ever with a new edition of the Weekly Rundown, where we talk about all things trail and ultra running from Southeast Ohio and all the running news from the East Coast. I'm your host, the faster host, Michael Owen. And I'm the better host, Wesley Harden. This week, we're coming to you from the OVRC studio. We will cover results from the Mount Mitchell 40 miler, the old girdled grit 50K, Virginia's reverse ring, and more. We'll also highlight all the running news from the East Coast in the world of Strava. But first, look at the Paul Barty streak. Thanks, Wes. Paul Barty extended his half marathon distance streak to 428 weeks with two runs over 13.1 miles this past week, including a very impressive race at the Black Mountain Marathon that coincides with the Mount Mitchell Challenge. Though Barty didn't make the cutoff to summit Mount Mitchell for the 36 miler, the race allows runners to be included in the marathon results. Barty finished 197 out of 244 runners with an impressive sub seven hour time. A sincere congrats on your first mountain race, Barty. Definitely. And now we'll jump into results and share full details from the Mount Mitchell Challenge and Black Mountain Marathon. Right here, these shirts. There was a large contingent of Ohioans and Ridge Runner Nation members that made their way to Black Mountain, North Carolina to run the 18 miles up to the highest peak east of the Mississippi and then back down again. The weather was absolutely ugly all day with rain, dense fog, and at the summit, temperatures in the mid 30s with reports of some sleet and high winds for portions of the day. Despite these wet and cold conditions, it didn't stop the strong competition from running fast. And quite frankly, it didn't stop me from wearing short sleeves all day. Meanwhile, my pink golf jacket kept me nice and warm all day. That must be a first. <laughs> Anyways, on the men's side, Asheville local Luke Paulson pulled away early and kept the lead all day by running the second fastest time in challenge history in four hours, 29 minutes. And Michael, it looks like you finished in second place. I did. Congra uh, congrats on the finish. Thanks, just couldn't uh, keep up with Luke. You were nine minutes back from Paulson at the summit and finished nine minutes back at the finish in four hours, 38 minutes. Yep. Another Mount Mitchell local and fan favorite, Aaron Saft, finished in third with a time of four hours, 57 minutes. 2018 Ohio's Ultra Runner of the Year, Travis Ziffel, unfortunately had to drop from the race near 30 miles after re-aggravating an Achilles injury. He had been running in third place for most of the day. On the women's side, we saw a tantalizing performance by the winner, Amanda Morris, who ran the second fastest time in course history in five hours, 27 minutes and 48 seconds. She was just ahead of you, right? Yeah, she blew by me with six miles to go. I tried to keep pace with her and she, I lasted like 30 seconds. She was nice. gone. Aliza Lapierre, former winner of the event, was just seven minutes back in five hours, 34 minutes. And coming in a distant third place was Beth Weathersby in six hours, 14 minutes. And besides the top three finishers, there was also a lot of Ohioans and Ridge Runner Nation members, um, including yourself, Wesley. Yeah, I was out there. And you finished probably one of your best results ever in ultra marathon your career. Yeah, definitely. Seventh place with five hours, 33 minute time. Yeah, and then Alex Jackson kind of followed that up. He switched from the marathon to the 40 miler the Crazy. night before, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, he finished in six hours, 35 minutes, 45 seconds for 37th overall. Yep, and one of our Athens locals, Doug Elselburn, also traveled down with us, finished uh, 48th place, six hours, 45 minutes. Nick Voss, who's a, a veteran at this event, yes, had definitely. a little off year, but he still finished seven hours. And then Grant Guthrie, also from Ohio. So it was a great weekend for us traveling together um, and for the entire Ohio crew. In the Black Mountain Marathon, where runners go partway up the mountain, and Ohio won outright, and that was Keith Harris of Cincinnati running three hours, 23 minutes, and 23 seconds. On the women's side, Cynthia Arnold from Montana won the marathon in three hours, 49 minutes, and four seconds. Another one of our crew, Jacob Opacheski from Columbus, ran his first marathon at this race. That's crazy. absolutely crazy. He picked a good one though. He may have been a little underprepared, but he finished just over seven hours. It was awesome having you there, Jake. Yes, for sure. In Virginia's reverse ring, another East Coast classic put on by the Virginia Happy Trail Running Club hmm. took place over the weekend for its 14th year. The reverse ring is labeled as a fat ass run by VHTRC and is an invitation only run with runners needing to be a member of the Fellowship of the Ring. Hmm. To be a member of the fellowship, one must have completed a previous running of The Ring, which is another event they put on in the fall. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think they have to watch Lord of the Rings too, right? As part of the... <laughs> probably. Fast. I mean, that, it, that must be a requirement in they the... They probably run faster than the whole series of Lord of the Rings though. Oh, definitely. 
But anyway, there's no registration costs, no awards. It's just a low-key race. These races are run in the rugged and challenging Macedon Mountains. This year, only nine of the 21 selected starters finished the reverse ring, with Dan Fogg running 14 hours and 31 minutes, a very fast time for this course. He was a full five hours ahead of second place and first place female Kathleen Kusick, running 19 hours and 36 minutes. Conditions were said to be challenging with heavy fog, tree blowdowns, and slick footing in the rain. And in the race report on the reverse ring website, it was said that Kathleen spent some time off trail during the night, leading to more miles and more time. Hmm. Well done. I definitely would love to check out this one, so maybe I need to look into getting into the ring that they host in the fall. I do know it's a lottery entry, with the selection being based on the closing number of the Dow Jones the prior day. Sign me up for that. That's awesome. The Old Girl of the Grit 50K took place this past weekend in Lake County, Ohio, near my hometown. Joe McDaniel won the men's race in four hours, six minutes, 18 seconds. Second place was also top female, Alexander Del Zopo, who finished in four hours, 20 minutes. John Nagel and Kevin Skilshish rounded out the men's podium with 434 and 436. Tight race. Cool. A familiar name, Amanda DeBethek, finished second female with a time of four hours, 36 minutes. There were a lot of Ridge Runner Nation members at this race. Matt Freeman ran the 50K in five hours, 53 minutes, and so did Tom Botker, who finished in five hours, 58 minutes. Adam Bashong ran the half marathon in two hours, 18 minutes. Congrats to all Ridge Runner Nation members. Congrats, guys. And now for the rant of the week. Today's rant is about poop. The kind of dogs make. Yeah. But this isn't about the dog's poop, it's about what the owners who own those dogs do with the poop when they are walking in public spaces. Last week along the Athens Hawk Hawking Adena bike path, I saw no less than 13 poop bags neatly tied and placed along the path. I also saw a few along the trails at Sells Park. This absolutely boggles my mind that people do this. Okay, so you have a dog, cool for you. And you go through the hassle to place the poop into little baggies. Well, good job, thanks for that as well. Oh, but wait, you forgot something. You decide to leave the bag of poop sitting there for the rest of the world to enjoy. Yeah, thanks for that. That's exactly what I wanna see when I'm out there running or walking with my kids. That's exactly what city workers or kind stewards want to be picking up to place in trash cans. I've got Instagram stories to take. I mean, I can't see those in the background. If you aren't gonna place the bag of poop in trash can, trust me, you are better off just letting the dog poop in the grass. It'll compost much faster in the air than it will in a steamy plastic airtight bag. Or how about the people that try to hide the bag under a rock or a bench? It's real nice too. Dogs don't lay eggs. They poop, okay? They need off of public spaces. Be civilized. Thanks for bagging the poop, but don't stop there. Please place it in a trash can. I think Aston should hire some detectives and place these poop bags in the owner's mailbox. That'll teach him a lesson. And rant. And now for our Strava Rundown. Hmm, back to a more positive note, where each week we highlight all the interesting activities and achievements from runners all across the East Coast. If you wanna get in there just on the rundown, join the Ridge Runners Club by hitting the link below. Yep, that's your race move. That's, I mean, you said I did that all weekend when I was, saw what? you coming down the mountain and yeah. I was just like this, super excited. Yeah, every race photo I've ever seen of you, that's what you're doing. <laughs> so that's, that's my move. The WH. Tyler Frazier ran what he called the Splash and Dash 2 5K on Sunday. Seems like a summer thing. Y yes, we'll get there. While we are not able to confirm whether this was a race or not, Tyler was absolutely moving. He averaged 626 miles. After further research, there were a lot of Splash and Dash 5Ks, but most seem to take place in the summertime. Hmm. Great work, nevertheless, Tyler. Stephen Cameron called his run and six this week. That's a lot better than and one. Like the shorts you wear in races? Yeah, or the basketball moves I always get score. Yeah. He ran six miles with what looked to be six climbs as he gained 551 feet. Stephen posted this awesome photo of himself after the run. He barely looked phased. I wanna know if he propped his camera up against his car and took this photo with a timer. That looks like a pro move. Probably has like a personal photographer or something. That's exactly what that is. Yeah, looking good, Stephen. Chris Wilson ran 20 miles over the weekend and titled his run, finally, Sub Nines. Chris, along with the rest of Ridge Runner Nation, claimed that the wind was beyond horrible. And it looks like Chris is now in taper mode as he preps for a 50 miler in two weeks. Best of luck in taper mode, Chris. Sub 12 is all you. For sure. Isaac Gibson and Ian Akers both ran 31 miles last Wednesday. That's a weird day to run 31 miles. That's a lot of miles on a Wednesday. This happened to be both of their longest runs in many months. They both eclipsed 80 miles for the week. 
Isaac stated that more big things may be coming this week, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Definitely, and kinda, I cannot wait to see both of you gentlemen at Ohio's Backyard Ultra. Yeah, and he also was talking about the wind. You see that picture he posted? That was crazy. Check this thing out. He is like sideways right now. This is awesome. Yeah, well, he's like 100 pounds. That's yeah, true. Me too. We saw on Strava that some people ran the vertical mile at Camp Newhop in the Mohican area. This is an invite race only, and runners complete a 3.1 mile loop with 1,000 feet of climbing until they reach 5,280 feet total. You know what that number signifies? I have no idea. One mile. Oh man, that is genius. It looks like they did it in about 19 miles. John and Nalene Welcome, John Rutherford and Rob Ballou all ran the vertical mile and claimed it was brutal. Great work, everyone. This looked like a fun one. Yeah, I'll have to check that out sometime. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in that. And with that, thanks for this week's rundown from the Ridge Runners. Be sure to tune in next week. We'll deliver news on the Comsat 50K, the Naked Barbarian 40 miler, the Fanta Dango 50 miler, and more. In addition, subscribe to our YouTube channel and smash the bell below, and you'll be notified every single time we release a new video. You can also find us in podcast form on Apple iTunes and Google Play. I'm your host, the better host, Wesley Harden. And I'm your faster host, Michael Owen. So close to taking that from you. We'll see you next week on The Weekly Rundown. I had a shower and was back to the finish line by the time you finished. That's, that was close, only six spots. Whatever. Whatever.